everybody and welcome to Art Journaling. Oops. Always takes me just a second to get my tech figured out here. Um, all right, I think we are all set there. Ooh, ooh my phone looks creepy. Okay. Um, welcome. My name is Tara Lynn and I am the owner of The Painted Cicada. I'm a mixed media artist and I love art journaling. So I'm super glad that you guys are here with me tonight. Um, if you have not joined me for art journaling in the past, um, I've got this, this fun little uh, ring of prompts here. I add to them all the time. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and I randomly pull different prompts to use to kind of um, stretch our imagination, um, stretch our creative muscles, and we use those to create with. So if you register um, before the event, uh, you will get a sneak peek at the prompt so you know kind of what we're working with. So the ones that I pulled tonight are black and white. Use iridescent paint, use a joyful color, glaze, and use something from the kitchen. So that's what we are doing tonight. And I am going to put these up. I wrote them on this piece of paper just because I always end up dropping them everywhere. <laughs> so I'm going to set that aside. And I will keep these here. Um, one of the beautiful things about um, art journaling is that uh, there are no rules. This is my own personal space, so I can do anything I want. And um, so interpret the prompts in whatever way they make sense to you. You don't have to do what I do. You don't have to do them in the order that I do them. Um, so feel free to kind of get in the creative flow, go in your own direction. That's absolutely okay. Or you can follow along with me step by step. That's okay too. Um, this is an example. This is my art journal. And this started right around the time that we um, went in shutdown for COVID. And um, I really missed my art classes with my, my Cincinnati family. Um, so I started art journaling and it was very therapeutic for me. So this is um, the art journal I started with. I called it my journal smash um, because I smash my ideas every time I pull a prompt. Um, but I'll just flip through so that if you're new to art journaling, you can kind of see. Um, and you'll notice some of these pages are better than others. Uh, but that's the beauty of working with an art journal. Get this over. You know what? I realized I need to move my camera. So give me just a second while I adjust. Settings are a little different when I work with Facebook than when I teach on Zoom. So I always have to go up and down with my camera. Okay. I am knocking everything over. Do you ever just have one of those days? Today's been one of those days for me. <laughs> All right, so here's my art journal. I'll just flip through the pages here. And then I'll get to a blank page and we'll get started. So um, if you don't have an art journal, don't feel like that's a requirement. You can always create on a canvas. You can create on a separate sheet of paper. Um, whatever works. You can create on a piece of scrapbook paper. You can even create on copy papers. There are no rules. There are no rules here. So sometimes I like to make these fun little pop-ups. Yeah, but all kinds of pages. This spread was one of my absolute favorites. And all of these just came from using prompts. And I did not have an idea of what I was going to do before I started. So they're all just very different. This 
also is one of my favorites. It's hard to see the color, but um, this was my um, art journaling with white only. All right, so here is, I think I'm just going to work on one side today. Where's my spread? All right. So now that we're going to get started. Oh, hi, Jamie. Hi, Debbie. I do have some. I, I miss you in in-person classes. I do have some in-person classes coming up, but I'm not sure how long that's going to last. You know how that goes. But I would love to see you out and about again when the time is right. That's the trick. Working around the COVID. All right. I always forget to look up and see the comments. It's always so nice when people pop on. All right. So I'm just going to get started here. And remember when you work with me, um, oh, I said I was going to take my face off. Let me get rid of that. Okay. When you work with me, you do not have to follow along step by step or do exactly as I do. Feel free to, to interpret the prompts however they make sense to you. Gosh, my camera. Come on, camera. There we go. All right. So first I want to, um, I know I'm going to do sunflowers tonight. Um, I just need to get some paint on my page here. That always helps me get moving. So I think I'm going to do green so that I can add on these sunflowers. What are you doing? Camera. Ay, ay, ay. Oh my gosh, my daughter has got music on so loud. mute for a second so I can yell at her to turn that down. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had it turned up. <laughs> she thought I couldn't hear it in here. Well, this green does not want to come out. Come on, green. Maybe it still has a piece of plastic stuck in there. All right. Anywho. I'm just going to kind of use this green and I'm going to start doing a little back and forth like a I don't know, a basket weave sort of thing. Really, I just want to lay down some color to get started. You guys are here with me tonight. I see that I have five or six people on. Make sure you say hello. If you're watching on the replay, make sure you throw a hashtag replay in the comments so I know you were here. It's been a busy, busy week for me. I've been frazzled, so I'm really excited to just sit down and move this paintbrush around. It feels very therapeutic almost.
I should turn that music down. It feels so quiet in here. I always avoid putting music when I do Facebook Lives because Facebook will sometimes censor them out. I don't like that. Hmm, I kind of like that. That's just a real painterly background there. I think that'll look good with sunflowers. There are quite a few people register for this sunflower event, so everybody must be getting ready for the end of summer, the beginning of fall. That's what some plants, bleh, that's what sunflowers represent to me, is kind of that transition. And I love them. When I was um, 14, my nickname was Sunflower, which eventually turned into Sunny. And that's kind of stuck with me through adulthood even, which is kind of fun. All right, so these are the prompts. Um, glaze something from the kitchen, use a joyful color, Use iridescent paint. I think I'm going to do something from the kitchen. Um, for the something from the kitchen, I grabbed a fork. Um, a spatula is a good option. Um, there's all kinds of fun things you can find in the kitchen. But I am going to come in this weave pattern, and I'm going to just use this fork to add in some texture. That's how I'm going to use this prompt. But I've pulled this something from the kitchen many times. I've used plastic wrap, I've used foil, I've used lids to stamp with, so there's lots of different options. I kind of like, I like this scrapey look here. It's kind of fun. Ooh, I forgot to mention too, if you registered for the event, um, you do have um, some printables available for sunflowers. If you want to use those, I might use mine. So check your email if you registered. All right, yay, I used my first crop, something from the kitchen. that down and put that right there. All right. I think I might go glaze for my next step. And if you don't have something that's uh, specifically marked as a glaze, you can make your own glaze. I think that's what I'm going to do. I've got this cool mint um, paint. I got this forever ago. It was on clearance. I've never used it. So I think I'm going to use this as my glaze. And I am just going to mix it um, like half and half with some water, maybe a little bit more to thin it down. And I'm going to put, I don't know, some. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. But um, ooh, I need to shake that up. Um, so a fun little trick that I do. <laughs> Hi, Glenda. Yes, I forked that whole background. I sure did. Well, I painted it and then I forked it. <laughs> That's funny. I love that comment. Linda said you forked that whole background. 
Um, a trick I have when I'm using acrylic paint and it's separated is I have these little um, nuts that go on the back of screws and they're just heavy enough that if you pop them in your paint, um, and I do this like with the craft paint too, if you pop them in there and shake them around, um, it's just the right um, weight that it mixes up that paint for you. Kind of becomes a little shaker ball. So that's a fun little trick. And if you get the uh, zinc ones, they don't rust. So they're, they're kind of perfect to do that with. So I'm going to create this glaze. And then before I glaze it, I'm going to make sure this is dry just so it doesn't lift. Um, it was, sorry, I did that kind of fast. I just got these from Home Depot. They're just little, um, like nuts that go on the back side of screws. And it doesn't matter what, really, what doesn't matter what size you get, but if you get the zinc ones, they don't rust. So you can put them in just about anything. Um, they're inexpensive. This might have cost me two or three dollars for a hundred. Um, and I just, they're cheap enough that I pop them in some paint and when the paint's gone, then um, I just toss them out. But it's a fun little trick to keep things from, um, you know, separate, especially like, uh, um, the word I'm trying to think of. Metallic paint separates really bad. And so those are super handy for that. And I have liquid watercolors I use them for because those separate and India inks will separate. So I use those a lot. But a hundred lasts me a long time. So for three or four bucks, I might not need to buy them again for a year. All right, I think that is good consistency for my glaze. I kind of want it to be a little thinner than melted ice cream to be a glaze. But I'm just going to hit this with my dryer just so I don't lift up any of this green. of it is pretty dry since it took me a few minutes to have that glaze made anyway. But I don't typically purchase any glazes um, unless I'm working like with wood and I've got like a wood um, finish. I just mix water into my acrylic. That's probably overkill, but it's dry. It's dry. Okay. And I think I'm going to kind of glaze this on a diagonal. I want to be able to see that texture through, so I added even more water.
And this green has kind of a, I don't know if I would call it a pearly finish or a metallic finish. That's kind of cool. I just wanted to add some variation to this background. I really like working with metallics. This color is lots of fun. Oh my gosh, you're not supposed to. Well, I do use heat. Um, that thing that I have, Glenda, is, um, that's a good question about using heat while you're drying. So this is an American Crafts um, heat gun. And I think it's most commonly used when people emboss, um, like emboss cards and want to raise things, but it dries because it's so hot, it dries the acrylic really fast. However, if I keep it in one spot too long and the acrylic is wet, it does boil and bubble the acrylic. Um, so you can damage uh, your pieces. I do have um, at my desk, I've just got a normal hair dryer too, and this has got a cool button. And so if I'm using, if I'm creating something where I'm really worried about how it's gonna turn out, I'll, I will use that. Um, but there's a lot of things that don't respond real well to heat. Like I have messed up acrylic in the past using that. And um, also like if you're using crackle or varnish, it's always best to dry that on cool or just to let it naturally dry um, because those things are very finicky and the heat will mess those up. Yeah, the one I, I have is just a Revlon. It was, I think it was 12 bucks. It was super cheap. It wasn't a nice, um, it wasn't an expensive hair dryer, but it's perfect for what I use it for. Kind of that quick blast. I just don't use it on videos because it's a lot louder on the camera than my little heat gun. Ugh. Been drinking so much water lately. So I like that. That added a little sheen to the back of my page. So that was my glaze. So I can mark that off. So I used something from the kitchen. That was my fork. I used a plastic fork, so I didn't wreck anything. And then I did my glaze. Dry that. I think it's mostly dry since I thinned it down. So the other three prompts that I have, uh, sometimes I pull five, sometimes I pull six. I pulled five today. Use a joyful color. Um, since I'm making sunflowers, I think the yellow for me is definitely a joyful color. So um, I'll definitely be, that will be my joyful color, I think. Um, use iridescent paint. Not sure what I'm going to do with that in black and white. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, I want to add some sunflowers. Maybe I'll do some in black and white and I'll do some in color or I don't know. All right. So I have my tracer. I printed, I printed my tracer out. You don't have to use a tracer whatsoever, but I think what I'm going to do is add some sunflowers. Um, If I want to get out my uh, graphite paper, I might try to use chalk. Let's see what happens. I don't, I don't know if this color will be dark enough to show up. I've got some blue chalk, and you can use chalk for a transfer. Transfer. Um, it's a really 
inexpensive and easy way to transfer, but I don't know that this will show up. So let's see if it will. Maybe it will. Maybe it will. Or white. I guess the green's probably dark enough. I just could have pulled out some white chalk. Well, let's see what happens. And when I do transfers, I try to just trace the minimum. Eh, yeah, I guess that's good enough. I just need an idea of where to put things. I don't need the, the whole spiel. I know that sunflowers have lots of short petals, so if I get a few on there, I should be good to go. You know what I mean? Maybe I'll try with white. Let's see what happens. Trial and error, y'all. Trial and error. I just want to get some of these on here. And I'm just going to make a bunch of sunflowers. You could also, if you, ooh, the white works much better. If you've got the tracers printed out, is you could totally just cut them out and glue them on. You can paint over the top of them. Um, you could print them on patterned paper. There's a lot of different ways you could incorporate those. Or you could just go rogue and you could paint sunflowers. No right or wrong. We just do what we want. I don't want you all know these. I just kind of lost the page a little bit. I don't know where I got this no rules thing, but I've been on a no rules kick lately, so I think that's going to stick around. No rules. That's how I roll. All right, so I've got three small sunflowers there. For those of you that are watching, um, is my sound okay? Because I can hear a little feedback. Um, if my sound's okay, give me a thumbs up so I know I'm not yelling or anything crazy. Ooh, I thought to sneeze. Go away, sneeze. All right, so since it calls for black or white, I think I'm going to try to make these monochrome if I can pull that off maybe I can I don't know if I can or can't we'll see I fade out that might just be my microphone I got my microphone up high I've got one of these lapel mics and I hate wearing it because then it always sounds like I'm crunched bear with me one second crunch crunch Let me try it like this. I bet I'm a lot louder. Oops. I am making a mess today, y'all. Ooh, yay. I'm glad the sound is better. Okay, I'll just wear it from now on. I thought if I put it up near my face it would just be too loud but that's probably the better <laughs> the better thing to do that's what it's made for so why wouldn't I do that right all right so I've got these sunflowers here um I think I'm gonna make I'm gonna start with white on the petals now I'm experimenting that's what this art journaling thing is all about so I'm going to start, I'm going to fill in the petals with white, and then I'm going to come through with like a, I'm going to make a gray. Let's see. And then 
I'll just swoop in some gray. So I'm going to do these um, black and white. And then I think I'm going to add like one big bright one. with colors. What I need to do is get some different shades of gray going here because I'm trying to work with just one and that's kind of making it difficult. That's the trick. So what I'm doing is putting white on my paintbrush and then I'm dipping it into a gray so that I've got two colors on my paintbrush. And then it's just mixing itself as I paint. So that's kind of cool. I like that look. Yeah, I like that. Okay. <laughs> Just don't burp. Glenda, you are cracking me up tonight. Yeah, I it's I am not um much of a one stroke painter. So, uh Glenda says that she likes to have two colors per stroke. Um, and there's a technique called one stroke painting. And it was like super popular in the late eighties and early nineties. And it's actually real. it's a really pretty technique. Um, and it is one that I have not mastered, but I would love, um, I would love to learn more and practice more. I just need to carve out time for that, you know? Sometimes it's hard to make myself sit and learn something new. <laughs> I just talk. Listen to how stupid I sound, Glenda. <laughs> Glenda says she, she gets scared to go live because she doesn't, she forgets how to talk. I stumble and bumble over my words and I sound crazy, but um, I figure if I'm doing a class in person, I'm the same way. So what you get is what you get, you know, might as well act the same. People are either going to love me or hate me, but I'm getting old and I'm not going to change. That's for sure. I'm already a weirdo. But I think, um, just to be silly, I think, um, I think a lot of artists are naturally like awkward or they feel they might not actually be awkward, but they kind of have that, um, tendency to, to feel awkward. Yes. Donna Dewberry, um, she is with, I think she teaches quite often with plaid, with folk art. Um, and she is very talented. And I am in, um, I'm actually in a membership with the Society of Decorative Painters. And there are a lot of one stroke artists in there. That's another fun place to look. Yes, the wild child folks. We definitely are. Us artists are a little cuckoo. All right, I like those. Sunflowers. Now I need to add some the centers, which are 
going to be a lot darker. So let me mix up a darker gray. And I'm going to just fill those in. Oh, did you learn from her? Yeah, she's still teaching. I see every once in a while, I'll see an advertisement from Folk Art um, with her name on it. And then I'm just going to tap in some black. And the way I did this, I just kind of put in a swoop and then I'm just giving it a couple taps. So the glaze um, is what made these stripes. I just wanted to add some texture. Um, so when I do these um, art journaling uh, lives, I pull prompts and one of the prompts was glaze. So I had to incorporate a glaze somehow. And so that's what this kind of um, pearly metallic co color is over the background was a glaze, but that's how I chose to go with it. <clears throat> and so I did my black and white prompt. And so the two things that I still have to do um, are use a joyful color. And I've already decided that's going to be yellow because we're doing sunflowers and then iris iridescent paint. So I think what I'm going to do is just uh, put a, I'm going to put a big giant sunflower like up here. Uh, let me pull out some colors for that. Ugh. Should I go with more yellow for my sunflower or more orange? Or both? I never know what to do. Here, I'll pull out some spiced pumpkin. That's one of my favorite colors. That's a good idea. Glenda says a huge yellow sunflower with Be Unique. I like that. Because I would have eventually asked if I should add words. That's usually my last question. Very good. Okay. All right. So I've got some cad yellow and some spiced pumpkin. That's what I'm going with. I realize at some point I'm probably screaming into this microphone. If I'm doing that, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not used to having it right up next to my face. I've got a little banana, little banana color too. So I'll just use a little bit of the, all of those. All right. So I think I'm just going to, just like I did earlier, just throw two colors on my brush here. Um, and I'll start with yellow and orange since oops, I might need to go a little bit larger with this brush. We have a beautiful sunflower farm fairly close to our house that I really want to go to. It's been really hot lately, so I haven't I haven't made time to go. And last year when I went bad memories. So I totally forgot about this. But last year when I went to the sunflower farm, 
um, when I got there and tried to pay, I realized somebody had stolen my credit card information and went on a shopping spree to Saks Fifth Avenue. Because when I got there, my card was decline, decline, decline. And I was freaking out because my husband had just gotten paid and like there totally should have been money. And I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? And I was there with six kids. No, five kids. I was there with my kids, and then my um, my son brought his girlfriends. So I was like, what do I do? So, like, the whole trip was, like, soured because I was freaking out about that. Luckily, they refunded it all. I mean, um, it was my bank account, and so I just called my bank while I was there. <laughs> like, as we were driving out through the pumpkin patch on our tractor I'm on the phone with the credit card company and they did fix everything actually very quickly they fixed everything which was awesome but now when I think of that place that's what I think of that's not what I want to think of I'll have to go back this year and reclaim the memory. My daughter is out in the living room cursing. I can hear her talking to her friend on the phone. She thinks I cannot hear her. That little stinker butt. <laughs> yeah, it was embarrassing at the register. I'm very cautious just because I don't, um, I don't know. I don't splurge with the kids very often. And so I, like, I knew I had money in there. So I, like, quickly put it on a credit card just to keep things moving. And then I was like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? a bee that would be fun okay so should I do a bee or should I do words You guys are watching from home. I see, I see eyeballs. Let me know. Do you think I should do some words or do you think I should add a B? I like both ideas. Got a bunch of quiet viewers at home. Well, maybe I'll do both. Maybe I'll do both.
is scary, Glenda. It's scary because it's our whole life, you know? You can't go any anywhere. I mean, nobody pays with cash anymore, really. And it's so easy just to take advantage of somebody. Because we use our, and we put our information everywhere. I'm glad they caught her though. I feel like, um, my husband says, and I agree with them. It's like when people steal from you, it's the worst. It just feels very, um, violating. Oh my goodness. I've been sitting on my foot for the last 45 minutes and I can't feel my whole leg. It would be amusing if I tried to stand up right now. Oh, guilty till proven innocent. That's what a horrible feeling. Oh, I missed one of my prompts. I was <laughs> so I used a joyful color, but I did not use iridescent paint. So shame on me. Shame on me. All right, so I'm going to let my bee dry. And then I'm going to add on some wings, but I don't want to mess up his his body there. Oh, what could I do? I've got I've got gold. I've got I've got this gold enchanted. <laughs> it's the worst like when it does that pins and needles and you can you know you can it almost like tickles all right so I'm going to use this this is my iridescent my last prompt I forgot about it so my joyful color was yellow that of course um everybody's going to feel differently about that so use whatever color you get excited about and my iridescent I'm just going to use this um, enchanted gold and I'm going to throw that on my sunflower so this this sunflower works theme works nicely today I like it I'm just going to add in some streaks here And then I'll just kind of add some glimmers of shine here and there. I'm being kind of haphazard about it. It would have been interesting too if I'd adjust, um, instead of putting it on the colored flower if I'd have put it on the black and white and maybe it would have just added just like the tiniest bit of color on those that would have been another option that's a cool thing Glenda I'm going to share that so she, Glenda says if you paint a home yellow on the outside it sells faster because that color is perceived as a happy color that's so cool. I've never lived in a, in a yellow house. My house right now is white, which I think is kind of boring. And um, it does dirt really easily, which I hate. I'm going to add his little wings. I'm going to use that iridescent for his wings because I have it out. And wings are kind of see-through, right? That's fun. I like this little guy. He makes me happy. Oops. I'm going to smudge the black. Shame on me. I'm 
lost my little brush. There it is. He needs some little buggy antennas. Bloop. Bloop. I like my bee. He's fun. All right. Now, let's see if I can add some words. I'm going to draw with pencil first. I always feel better if I do it in pencil. Oh my gosh, Glenda, my mom says that all the time about the red car. Um, my mom, <laughs> she won't buy a car unless it's like a crazy, ridiculous, bright color. So she's always had like red. Um, she's had yellow and her, the most recent car that she's had is like this crazy, like yellow green. And she said, you get in less accidents. Um, that's funny. She's always told me that growing up. All right. I like be unique, so I'm just going to write that right here. B. Oops, it's not going to fit, darn it. I hate when I do that. I went too big. That's all right, because it's in my art journal and nobody's going to see it but me. So I'm just going to go with the flow here. Actually, I might use a... I'm going to use a Posca pen for my writing today. And I think that is my last little step. So um, if you're just joining, the prompts for tonight were glaze. Something from the kitchen, use a joyful color, use iridescent paint, and black and white. So you can totally interpret those however you wish. And if you do create with us, make sure you share it. I would love to see, that's my favorite part, is seeing what everybody creates. So I love to see all the different things that um, end up showing up from these art journaling lives. So please share with me, let me throw the address on there. Uh, share with me in the group Mixed Media Crazy. It is a group I designed for sharing all the goodies that we make. Um, and if you like art journaling, uh, my art journaling membership is open. Uh, I had a little change from what I've been doing previously. So, um, it is located on patreon.com forward slash painted cicada. Um, and I, if you like art journaling, I would love to welcome you in, uh, to my membership there. It is super fun. We've got a great group of women um, working on the prompts every month. And, uh, it's amazing seeing all the different ideas that people come up with. So, um, I am open the membership through the end of this month. Um, and I would love for you to join me there. Uh, also, uh, later this evening, um, I'm going to take a break and eat dinner, but at nine o'clock I have, um, kind of an art journal chat with a friend of mine, a well-known local artist um, named Kim with Artfully Years 95. And um, she does some amazing art journaling and mixed media, and she'll be available um, for all kinds of questions. And that'll be um, right here on my Facebook page at 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, 8 p.m. Central. Um, so feel free to take a break and come back and join us and ask some questions and meet Kim. She's super fun. Um, otherwise it's been, uh, fun creating with you. Thank you for joining. Um, uh, I can't wait to see what you guys make. And, um, I do have, a, a free art journaling lesson every month. 
uh, from now until the end of the year. So check those out um, at PaintedCicada.com. If you register, you do get the prompts ahead of time. So um, show me what you create, people. Have a good night.